This is Story Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain a thriller, drama, sci-fi film called At First Light. This is a film about ordinary people having encounters with otherworldly beings and has similarities to classics such as Close Encounters of the Third Kind and The Day the Earth Stood Still. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Strange lights in the sky have long been an observed phenomenon ever since people could point cameras at the sky. Most of these lights can be explained by weather phenomena, astronomical events, or simply by tricks of light. But some people swear that the lights that they encounter are of extraterrestrial origins. In this film, a pair of teenagers' lives change when they encounter strange lights from the sky. Sean and his brother Oscar are at a store and Sean tries selling jewelry. Oscar walks around the store, grabbing things and putting them in his bag. The store owner asks Sean where he got the jewelry, but Sean doesn't answer. Oscar walks up to a counter and sees a necklace which he snatches back. Sean tells him to wait outside, but as he opens the door, he gets punched. The kid then pins him down, telling him to stay out of their house. Sean comes to Oscar's rescue, and the pair head home. They arrive at a pigsty of an apartment where their grandmother sits on the couch, motionless. Sean gives his grandmother her pills, but sees they need refilling. Oscar reads a letter from school detailing how he had been in several fights. Outside, Sean's friend Nathan calls him, inviting him down so they can attend a party. Sean then leaves cash for food and heads out. Sean meets Nathan, and Nathan teases him, telling him to loosen up and behave like a teenager and less like a parent. Sean seems offended by the remark, and Nathan immediately apologizes. Sean brushes it off, and they drive off to a dirt track. They join a large group of teenagers drinking and dancing, and Sean spots a girl, Alex. Nathan and Sean start drinking, and Nathan notices Sean looking at Alex. Nathan relays some gossip about how Alex had been seen making out with someone, and Sean seems uncomfortable upon hearing it. Nathan notices and tries to play off the gossip as hearsay, but Alex approaches them. Nathan senses Sean and Alex could be needing privacy, so he leaves. Sean and Oscar seem to be two teenagers completely on their own. Oscar snatched the jewelry Sean was selling, indicating that they may have sentimental value. It's indirectly implied that the jewelry belonged to their mother, and Sean selling it could be an indicator that they don't have a good relationship with her. Nathan mentioning Sean behaving like a parent struck a nerve with Sean, further indicating that Sean's mother could have abandoned them. Sean is young, but the responsibility to provide for Oscar and their grandmother has fallen to him. Alex asks Sean how he's been, and Sean tells her his grandma isn't doing as well as she's bedridden and hasn't spoken in a while. Sean notices Alex's tattoo, and Alex says her boyfriend, Tom, has one too. Sean seems annoyed that Alex mentioned Tom and asks if their relationship is serious. Alex says she has fun with Tom, and Sean asks if she means sex. Alex takes offense and asks Sean why he cares since they haven't spoken after high school. Alex says she understands that Sean was going through a lot back then, but says she would have helped and supported him if he had just reached out to her. Sean doesn't take her pity and points out she had every chance to support him, but she didn't. Sensing their conversation wouldn't end well, Alex leaves. Sean calls her, asking if they could talk in private, but Alex says she doesn't have his number. Sean then writes his number on her forearm. Alex then joins Tom, and they leave. Alex and Tom then arrive at a creek to skinny dip, while Sean decides to leave the party. Alex suddenly goes under the water, and Tom panics, calling to her. Bright lights suddenly fill the sky, appearing to move through the city. Tom then freaks out and leaves after failing to find Alex. The lights then converge on Alex, seen drifting in the water. The lights cause her to have visions, and Alex sees random strange images. Sean arrives back home and helps his grandmother to bed. He and Oscar later watch TV. Alex and Sean had a history with each other. Whether their relationship was platonic or not, there had been an obvious falling out. Sean may have reclused after his mother left, and Alex may have taken it as Sean not wanting to be friends with her anymore. Nevertheless, their conversation led to Alex leaving and ending up in the water where she was basked in light. Meanwhile, Cal is driving around the city looking for signs of the strange lights when he sees a half-naked Alex walking down the middle of the road. He stops to help, but Alex seems dazed. He then puts a coat over her, takes her into his car, and drives her to the nearest diner. 
Inside the diner, a waitress helps Alex and gives her some clothes. Alex then finds Sean's number on her arm. Alex appears to be completely out of it, seeming like she has no idea where she is or what has happened to her. Sean is awakened when his phone rings, and he's surprised to hear it's Alex. He gets up and heads out to fetch her. He gets to the diner, finds Alex waiting for him with the waitress, and takes Alex into his car. He asks her how her night went, but Alex remains quiet. Sean tells Alex she can sleep in their apartment, believing Alex had taken drugs at the party. Alex's nose starts bleeding, and Sean helps her, but she quickly falls asleep. The following day, news outlets are filled with reports about a phenomenon involving strange lights in the sky from several eyewitnesses. Sean gets up early to buy his grandmother's medicine. Alex wakes up and walks around the place, but the grandmother notices her presence. At the pharmacy, Sean sees a news report about Alex and how she's been reported missing. Cal doesn't appear to be the run-of-the-mill extraterrestrial fanatic, spending his nights looking for remnants and clues for the lights. He seems to be a good-hearted person, as he doesn't take advantage of Alex. Considering what had happened, Alex is extremely fortunate to have found Cal. Whether this was a coincidence or not, no one can tell, but the lights have caused their paths to cross. Alex, on the other hand, appears as if she has no recollection of anything. When she looked at herself in a mirror, it was as if she had seen herself for the first time. After seeing Alex in the news, Sean understands the gravity of the situation and realizes Alex may be in deeper trouble than he realized. Oscar is in the kitchen eating breakfast when he sees his grandmother walking around the house, apparently getting ready to leave. He appears to be in total disbelief as his grandmother walks out the front door. Sensing someone in the house, Oscar grabs a knife and investigates. When he opens the bathroom window, he sees Alex, and the two startle one another. Suddenly, appliances in the house start humming, and a magnetic resonance fills the air. The knife Oscar holds levitates for a few seconds before falling to the ground. Meanwhile, Cal is preparing to leave. He's searching for more clues regarding the strange lights, and upon seeing the news about the lights in Alex, he recognizes Alex and puts two and two together. Sean arrives home, and Oscar tries to tell him about what happened. He's equally puzzled, brushes it off, and tells Alex she needs to get home as authorities are looking for her. The grandmother returns, and three of them stare, baffled. She then tells them to clean up as they're going to have breakfast. Later, Alex and Sean are walking when Alex stops to look at the mountains and remembers glimpses from her childhood. Sean then asks what Tom gave her at the party, alluding to her state last night, but Alex looks at him confused. He then asks why she called him and not any of her other friends, and Alex gestures to Sean's number on her forearm. They continue walking, but Alex wants to go in the mountain's direction. Sean points out her house is in the other direction, and Alex follows. The lights could have done more than give Alex amnesia. She healed Sean's grandmother and has gained superpowers. It appears that she still can't control her abilities and seems like they're let out by heightened or extreme emotions. With the lights suddenly making an appearance around the same time a half-naked girl was seen walking down the road, Cal couldn't pass it off as a coincidence. His intentions are still unclear, but it would seem like he'd be the one to provide the answers. They arrive at Alex's house and find the police present. They enter, and Alex's stepmom is shocked to see her. She asks where she's been and tells her they found her things by the reservoir, and they thought the worst had happened to her. She immediately calls Alex's father, and Alex bolts up the stairs into her room, taking Sean with her. In her room, Alex looks at pictures all over her mirror and keeps seeing images of her youth. She then looks out the windows, staring at the mountains. She asks, what's behind the mountains? And Sean says nothing but desert for miles. She disagrees, saying there's something else there. She then sees birds forming strange shapes in the sky. She changes clothes and tells Sean they need to leave and they shouldn't have come to her house. Alex's stepmom and the police officer start banging on her door, demanding she open it. But Alex starts running toward her window, grabbing Sean as they fall out. She then puts her hand out and they stop several inches before hitting a police car. Alex gets into the car and tells Sean she doesn't belong there. As she drives off, Sean runs after her and joins her. Alex's stepmom appeared less relieved and was even a little upset when Alex returned. This could be attributed to people processing traumatic experiences differently, but she didn't even hug Alex when she saw her. She just mentioned that they thought that she was dead, yet she seemed more disappointed than worried about Alex's disappearance. Alex seems to be attracted to the mountains. It could be the lights, but it could also have a relation to her youth. Whether the images that she sees are memories, hallucinations, or visions isn't clear yet, but this is strange, as she has lost her memory yet remembers glimpses of her childhood. The extent of Alex's powers are still unknown, 
but it's clear she's gaining better control over it. They later stop on the side of the road, and Alex tells Sean what had happened. She says that she was underwater and felt like she had drowned, but she started seeing lights in the water, saying she could feel it with her. She then places his hand on her chest, and as Sean feels her heartbeat, the hair on his arm stands, and his necklace begins levitating, appearing magnetically attracted to Alex. Sean then takes a soda can and asks Alex to move it. Alex then focuses on the can and closes her eyes. Alex opens her eyes disappointed to see that the can hasn't moved, but Sean makes her look at the window and she sees the car is levitating. She's startled and they immediately fall back down. They then head to a restaurant to get some food and Sean gets Alex her favorite drink. Sean asks if Alex remembers anything from what happened the night before, but Alex says she has trouble remembering her whole life. She likens it to a dream she knows she had, but can't remember the details. She says all she remembers is Sean picking her up from the diner. The waitress brings them their food and informs them she notices two men suspiciously looking at them. Alex and Sean thank the woman and leave. The men go after the two and Tom shows up. He asks where she's been, accusing Sean of kidnapping her. He then takes Alex by the arm and forces her into his truck. Alex gets mad and suddenly the cars are pushed back. Tom's truck levitates and gets folded in half. Sean and Alex use the confusion to flee. The light may have assimilated with Alex for a purpose. Alex had gained the light's powers and abilities at the expense of losing her memories. Alex also showed extreme strength with her powers, but it appears that she no longer wants to have any affiliation with her past life. She says coming back home was a mistake, and now she's pushed Tom away. Meanwhile, Cal's sensors go off the charts and he quickly makes a U-turn. He then spots Alex and Sean running. He tells them to get into the car. Sean refuses, but Cal tells them he knows what's happening to them and tells them other people other than the police are looking for them. He then offers to explain everything if they come with him. Alex immediately gets in, and Sean reluctantly follows. While driving, Cal hands Alex a vest lined with lead. He tells them it's to protect people from her. Alex is confused but puts it on. Later, Cal shows them footage of the lights. Sean asks if the lights are some kind of alien spaceship, and Cal says they are pure light. He tells them he used to work for the people who are hunting down Alex. He was the one who was tasked to change hospital records, destroy evidence, and erase any proof of the light's effects. Alex asks if there are others like her, and Cal says they don't usually survive past a few hours. Alex is the first case that has survived this long. Alex heads to the bathroom, and Cal tells Sean he needs to keep away from Alex as she's emitting dangerous radiation. Sean asks why the lights have come, and Cal reveals that a facility had been built somewhere in the desert to contact extraterrestrial life. Cal tells them that they need to lay low, as he'll try to come up with a way to reveal all of this to the general public. He then offers a trailer near his house they can use to sleep in. It appears that the lights had chosen Alex for a reason. They had been trying and failing to assimilate with humans, but most of them seem incompatible. Maybe Alex's past holds the answers to why the lights chose her. The lights were notably attracted here by an unnamed agency. It could be assumed that this agency is connected to the government, as they'd be unable to establish contact without NASA. Another thing to note is the radiation Alex is emitting. Earlier, she healed Sean's grandmother. This time, she appears to be making Sean sick. In the trailer, Sean asks Alex if she trusts Cal, and she says she's unsure. He then asks if she's half alien, and she says she doesn't know what she is. Sean tries consoling Alex, and Alex asks where Sean got his necklace. Sean says it was her that gave it to him, and Alex says she wishes that she could remember more things. Sean then says he wishes the opposite were true for him, as he wants to forget lots of things. Alex then spots a rash on Sean's nape, and he says it's probably from when they fell out of the window and she placed her hand there. The pair then get some rest. At dawn, Alex stares at Sean before leaving. Sean later awakens from a nightmare and notices that he's alone. He tries walking but he falls and starts vomiting. He then stumbles out looking for Alex. Meanwhile, Cal is preparing to leave when he finds out that the pair had left. Alex is at a bus station getting tickets. A team of operatives led by a woman, Kate, bursts into Cal's home. Kate sees Cal has stolen some of their equipment and asks if Alex is stable. Cal says that she's fine and she's different from the rest. A soldier tells her that they've located Alex and Cal tells her to be less aggressive as the aliens are only trying to connect with humanity. Sean reaches the bus station and tells Alex he doesn't want her out of his life. Alex refuses, saying she doesn't want to hurt people. Sean argues against it, saying her showing up and his grandmother suddenly getting better isn't a coincidence. He then kisses her and they get on the bus. 
Alex probably left because she didn't want to cause anybody any harm. One could say that Alex's sympathy towards the people that she loves caused her to leave, but it could also be the lights manipulating her emotions, making her leave and come closer to the mountains. The bus then runs into a checkpoint. Soldiers enter to examine the passengers for radiation. Their instruments all sound up after getting to Alex. The soldiers then force the pair out of the bus and drive them to the facility. At the facility, Alex is rushed to an MRI machine. Sean waits in an interrogation room and keeps shivering, feeling the effects of radiation poisoning. He reaches behind him and sees his neck is getting worse. Kate enters, and she tells him that they're trying to help Alex. Sean demands to see Alex, but Kate tells him he can't, as the radiation is too dangerous. Meanwhile, doctors are rushing to stabilize Alex. She falls unconscious and sees herself as a child climbing a tree in a field. She regains consciousness, and a doctor tells her she's been given a paralytic. Kate tells Sean that they've put a lot of money and resources into trying to contact the lights, but the lights opted to choose Alex for unknown reasons. She assumes the lights are using Alex as a means of communication. Sean asks what the lights are, but Kate can't give him a straight answer. They found that the lights are ancient, possibly even dating back to the birth of the universe. She reveals that previous attempts to contact the aliens have always failed, usually ending in someone's death. It's only with Alex that the lights have managed to stay for so long. Alex's MRI scan begins, and the doctor immediately notices an anomaly in her brainwaves, believing she's seeing something. In Alex's mind, she sees herself staring at the sky as lights appear. A flash occurs, and the lights disappear. It's still undetermined whether the things Alex is seeing are memories or a vision. But if they were memories, this explains why the lights chose her. She had an interaction with them when she was a child. The lights could have marked her for their return, and when they returned, they assimilated with her successfully. Why the lights did this is still largely unknown. The lights could be using her to communicate as Kate has stated, but the lights haven't made any attempts to communicate. The entire facility suddenly starts shaking, and lights flicker. Doctors rush to shut the MRI down as they see that Alex is having a cardiac arrest. Alex suddenly starts attracting all things magnetic, and people start running. Sean makes his way toward Alex, while everyone evacuates. Sean finally reaches Alex, but sees that she is flatlined. Suddenly, Alex gets up. She carries Sean out of the facility, and they end up in the middle of the road. Kate sees them and follows. Alex lays Sean on the ground, and the facility's lights simultaneously turn on. Alex takes control of the entire light array and begins projecting symbols into the sky. Lights then begin descending from the night sky and converge on Alex. Sean and Alex are then bathed in light, and Sean sees one of the lights up close. Alex touches Sean's nape, healing him instantly. Alex then turns bright and she becomes light. She joins the others and floats into the night sky. Months later, Oscar and Sean are playing in the streets as helicopters fly overhead. Oscar asks if the agency watchman would ever stop monitoring Sean, and Sean says he doesn't believe that they will. The helicopters then fly towards a massive light formation in the middle of the sky. The lights that assimilated with Alex could have been taken over and used their powers to communicate with the rest of the lights by using the facility. They must have taken Alex for a reason. One theory is that they could be studying her as a way to find out how to communicate with humans. Another theory is that the lights had chosen Alex as the first of many who would ascend to join them. Whatever the reason is, this was a significant event as the lights have now revealed themselves to the world. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.